In this section, we're going to be talking about the Array tool. Array is found in the Transform menu, and it's a powerful tool for multiplying objects according to certain criteria, for example, rectangular, polar, along curve, along surface. So let's take a look. I'm going to start with a sphere, and we're going to try a rectangular array. Transform, Array, Rectangular. I need to choose the number of spheres that the finished version is going to have in each direction. 10 might be a bit much, so we'll go 5, 5, 5. Unit or cell spacing. At this point, I need to draw a box. This is going to tell me how far away each sphere will be from the next. I'll make it fairly small, like this. Height. Now I can change the height, or I can press Enter to use the width that I've just entered. So I'll press Enter so it's a box. And now here's our array. As you can see, it is a cube, basically, of spheres. 5 by 5 by 5, just as we specified. So let's undo the tool, and let's try a different type of array. Transform, Array, Polar. Select my object, press Enter. Now I need to pick the center of my polar array, which is going to be like a circular array, basically. So I'll pick out here, and then I just simply type in the number of items. I'll try 30. Press Enter. Angle to fill, 360 degrees means it will go all the way around, so that's fine. We'll press Enter. And there you have it. 30 spheres forming a chain, 360 degrees. I'm going to undo that. Let's look at some of our other types of arrays here. A long curve. For that, we're going to need a control point curve. And we'll make it sort of interesting. So I'm going to draw it in two different viewports, which means it's going to end up sort of three-dimensional. As you can sort of see from our perspective viewport here. Now, this works best if the sphere itself is actually on the curve at some point. And there we have it, lying flat on the curve there. Transform Array Along Curve. Select Path Curve. Now here our window comes up. Freeform Twisting or Road-like. These will change the look of the array. For now, we'll try Freeform Twisting, Number of Items. We'll say 40. It's a pretty long curve. The distance is auto set. You can set it manually. We'll leave it to auto. Press OK. Now look what happened. We've got quite a jumble. Depending on what type of curve you use and where the curve is and how large the curve is, you're going to get a variety of different looks on your array. So let's try that again. And this time, let's try road-like. Along curve, road-like, OK. Now, at this point, I need to click a viewport to choose a construction plane. It will base the road-like array on the construction plane that you choose. So let's try this one. Same thing. Let's try again. Select path curve, road-like. This time, we'll try that one. As you can see, I'm getting the same type of array every time. So now let's try something a little different. We're going to move our sphere. To there. Select the sphere, transform, array, long curve, here, OK. And now, since the curve has been oriented differently according to the sphere, with the sphere appearing right at the end of it, our array more or less follows the path. But we could make it even tighter. Let's try that. Select the sphere, transform, array, along curve. Let's try 80 items. 
And now we have a pretty good chain of spheres representing our curve. Now I'm pressing undo. Along surface, we'll actually array this it along a surface, and curve on surface works the same as curve, although you will select the curve manually on a surface. So I'm just going to create a quick section there, quick curve, patch, press OK, delete my original, and now here we have a really strange surface. Transform, array, along surface, select base point, I'll click here, reference point. The further you put this away, the more spacing, the larger the array is going to be, so I'll put it there. Then I select my surface, enter, enter, and let's take a look. As you can see, they're blanketing the surface and following its contours and also extending out to either side. Array along surface will work with any surface. It could be a sphere. It could be a box. In this case, we've used a strange sort of potato chip type surface.